Hi, it's Hans Schumann, the Masterful Living Coach here. The first week of January is already over. How are you doing with your New Year's resolutions? I'm actually not a big fan of this word, New Year's resolutions. So much hype about it, so much cynicism. But I am a, a believer in goals and I'm a fan of goals. Deciding what we want to create in our life and creating a strategy that helps us manifesting it. And the New Year is just a really good time of the year to create those goals. So that's why I, every time of the year, sit down and create my goals for the next year. The thing with New Year's resolutions, though, is often people fail, and they fail because of two main reasons that I see. The first reason is that the goal is just too big and too vague. I spoke to two women uh, this week who had this goal of becoming a better version of themselves in each area of their life. More productive, more effective, more disciplined, and just better. And they asked me how to do this. Well, I can't tell you. I mean, what does it even mean being a better version of yourself? It doesn't mean anything, and it's impossible to achieve. It comes from this notion that we also become a superman or a superwoman. That's exhausting. It's just doomed to fail. So instead, I encourage these women to come up with something smaller, manageable, that you can actually uh, follow through with. For example, a manageable goal would be to lose five kilos this year. A manageable goal would be to learn a new language, to create a meditation practice of meditating 30 minutes a day, or of exploring a career change. These are goals that will all help us to become a better version of ourselves, if, if, if that goal is of interest to us. But we can actually do it, and we can measure it, and we can feel good once we created that in our life. So that's, that's my first tip. Create something, decide on a goal that you can actually achieve, and that you know what it exactly means and what you need to do. The second thing that I've been seeing this week is people starting with a resolution that as isn't actually backed by a proper commitment. I, I've got this Facebook group, which is for people who want to do a dry January. And one of the guys who signed up, his commitment was that he will try to stay dry in January. And he wrote, I hope I can do it. Well, that's not a commitment. Hope has nothing to do in this equation. We can hope that the weather will be good tomorrow or that we win the lottery. But when it comes to staying dry for January, that's entirely in our control. Hope has nothing to do with it. When we express a commitment with the words, I will try, or I hope, we're already putting the possibility for failure in our commitment. We are allowing for the possibility that we will actually not be able to do it. Although the only thing that can get in our way of not sticking to our commitment when it comes to a commitment like staying dry for January is our own will. It is all about our commitment. So if you have a new resolution and you're not really committed and come through in the language and the way you talk about it, have a think about why that is. And maybe there's no point in committing to this thing because it's really not that important to you. And if that's the case, then divert your energy to something that is more important to you and that you can actually fully commit to. Well, these are my thoughts on New Year's resolutions. I hope this, this has been helpful. If you want to join my Dry January group, it's not too late. Do send me a message and I will send you the link. And also, I created a free worksheet that you can download that will and create you um, that will provide you with a structure for creating goals for 2018. That's the one I use as a New Year's ritual each and every year. If you would like to have that, there's a link in this post. Thank you very much and good luck for the rest of 2018.